Right, welcome to this review for Shadow War Armageddon, uh, the publication that's uh, come out here. It's Deadly Skirmish Combat in a War Torn Hive World. So it's like Warhammer 40,000, but it's uh, downsized to um, individual models, sort of a squad, and then broken up into individual models. Uh, rules for it here. So you can expect something more detailed. Uh, in this video, it's going to be like a just an overview and review here. I'm going to flip through uh, the book and give you an idea of what to expect uh, from the content inside. I know uh, that Necromander uh, is on the way as well. Um, so there's that to look out for as uh, Games Workshop sort of expand into sort of skirmish based uh, games uh, in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. So they used to do Necromander. It was, it's got a great following uh, and was very popular and it's great that Games Workshop will bring that back. Uh, but here we'll take a look at Shadow War Armageddon. Then uh, just to mention, um, really like this scout here for the Blood Angels, the red and the grey looks really good. Um, if I did do Blood Angels scouts and collect those then I would do them in that colour scheme just there, just by way of mention. I was really impressed, I was really impressed when I saw that. Um, so I've got one for GamingFigures.com, they do Games Workshop at a discounted rate, you can check them out. Uh, it just means you can get all of your Games Workshop stuff and other gaming systems and accessories as well, all at a discount. Uh, just there. And if you're in the UK, your order comes to over £40. They give you free postage as well. So, the Imperial Hive world of Armageddon is engulfed in planet-wide planet war as countless hordes of ferocious orc warriors surge across the jungles, mountains, and ash wastes. They are met in fierce combat by the massed soldiers of the Astra Militarum and the mighty space marines of the Adeptus Astartes. The bloodiest and most Grueling conflicts are fought within the hives, the ancient towering cities, the last strongholds of humanity. So that's where the fighting's taking place. Uh, in and around Hive uh, Acheron, a site of endless battle, elite squads of soldiers deployed in search and destroy missions. That's giving you the theme and the feel of the types of games you'll be playing. These guerrilla fighters operate where larger armies are unable, creeping through the siege lines into the twisting pipes and gantries that snake throughout the hive. They stalk the darkness, striking deep within enemy territory before fading into the shadows. So scouts are perfect for that. They're assassins and saboteurs, scavengers and predators. They are the kill teams of Armageddon. So it's a tabletop game for two or more players where you each control a kill team of Citadel miniatures. Uh, this book contains all the rules you need to fight battles in the darkness of the underhive. So you should be able to uh, just take a squad from your regular collection and then use these rules. Um, I reckon you're going to need sort of that kind of terrain, you know, sort of if you can. Multi levels they work best, multiple levels and buildings, and uh, like Hive World sort of style. So, I mean, it is a big book, there's a lot in here, so it's not a sh shallow publication by any means. So, there it is, nice bit of artwork here. Yeah, it goes perfect with that epic terrain. So maybe, you know, you've played a lot of 40k and you're looking for something more focused on individual models. This is perfect for that. If you know the way this is going to work with Necromander, whether Necromander is just going to replace this entirely, whether it is just a repackaged version of this, if you know what the structure and the approach the Games Workshop are taking, then by all means leave that in the comments section. Decent artwork here. It's the Wars of Armageddon. The Third War. The Warriors. Talks about Space Marine Scouts here. Some of the weaponry. Walk Boys mobs. You can imagine them pillaging and uh, causing destruction all across uh, the cities. National of Time Veteran Squads. So I suppose it's focusing on those factions primarily. The hunting grounds denizens of the underhive so that's giving you an idea of the kind of games it's not open battlefield it's more this uh, corridors and walkways and so on is where you'll be fighting see they, they paint these uh, scouts here this is the this is what put me off them the cream um, trousers and uh, shirts and so on but the gray I think looks a lot lot better I wonder if they painted any up that way in here so core rules Okay, so it's interesting, maybe you're into 8th edition and you've got spare scatter dice and templates now, will you keep them in this rule set? Scatter dice are here. Ah, oh, the old artillery dice, which I haven't used or seen for a long, long time, so they're in there as well. Uh, I have a few spare of them from some old 
box sets and the small large and flavour templates uh, you'll need as well. They're keeping the old uh, yeah, no it's here so initiative remains in here, look initiative 4 here for Space Marine Scouts they have adjusted the movement though uh, as they've done in 8th, so Space Marine Scout goes 5 a veteran guardsman goes 4, it's interesting that he's a fair bit slower and then Orc Boy uh, is 4 inches as well the phases is movement, shooting so nice, no psychic phase, hand-to-hand -hand combat and then recovery regain their nerve if shaken by enemy fire or recover from minor injuries cool. again is that focus on the individual models it's um no, it's good it looks really good. it looks good if you want to immerse yourself more uh, into a skirmish game which is a popular angle uh, for Warhammer 40,000 okay some movement so your charges come first Interesting, so it's a different order from 7th edition. Then compulsory moves, uh, a fighter whose nerves break and he runs away. Okay, so the, even though it's individual models, there's still uh, the possibility of running away. Um, then the rest of the movement, so once you, you see all your normal, normal move, uh, moving to position and so on, there's running, charging, multiple enemies, you can charge into multiple enemies, silent weapons. Oh, there's spotting involved. Oh, there's depth to this for sure. Talking about the terrain as well. That's just labelling it for you here. Open ground, wall, open ground, impassable. Okay. Shooting phase. There's a lot more depth here. I mean, 8th edition would have finished now in the wall somewhere, but uh, we're just on to shooting here. So, line of sight ranges. You've got a short range and a long range. Interesting hit modifiers, so you've got minus one partial cover, minus two in cover, minus one overwatch, minus one charging, minus one running, minus one small target, uh, plus one large target. Very good. This is different here. And then the following examples, this is to hit rolls, uh, a bolt pistol plus two at short range, nothing for long range, bolt gun plus one, les gun plus one, shooter, sluggers minus one at long range. Cool, okay, this is this is elements of other editions of, of 40k. So I wonder if, if, if uh, Necromancer is the same as this or not. Let's talk about cover. Less than half of the fighter's body is in view, he's in cover. More than half of the body is in view, so he's in partial cover. And then in the open, there's nothing. Okay, and that's sensible. And that's more sensible than 8th edition, dare I say it. Uh, target toughness, strength as usual, saving throws. Yep, squigs get a 6 plus, squig hide armor. <laughs> okay. 7 plus to hit is available as well. Pinned. Alright. As soon as a fighter is hit, the model is knocked over and placed face up. We say the fighter's been pinned. Right, so you cause that hit, at least you force them to duck their heads. Cool. Which is a good, that sounds really good rule. Injuries as well. So, uh, if you have a wounds characteristic of, of one, um, no, if it has a wounds characteristic of more than one, then deduct one from their characteristic for the rest of the game for each wound. As soon as the fighter suffers the last remaining wound, the player's fighter inflicted the wound, rolls a d6, consults the table. So, flesh wound, down, and badly wounded, remove the model from play. Takes no further part. So it takes a fair bit to actually knock someone out of the game. Flesh wound down and then out of action. Mortal wounds, high impact, pinned. Fighters, you can shoot in hand to hand. Shooting at a fighter who's down. Ammunition rolls. Overwatch is available as well. There's counters there to use. Sustained shooting. We have bonus there, or your ammo goes low. Fleeting targets. Blast weapons, just scatter all up as normal. Grenades, flamers, exploding grenades. And then you're on to combat. There's a fair amount of detail here. So that's your order that you fight. Roll the attack dice, determine the winner, number of hits, roll to wound, save and throw, 
resolve injuries. Uh, so that's all up there. Combat score modifiers, opponent fumbles, critical hit charging, higher up, encumbered, and minus one obstacle. So pluses and minuses there. Different weapon types. You can parry, fumble, follow up. Yeah, there's a fair bit here. Special injuries. Okay, then you're on to leadership. Uh, break tests. I'm wondering how this works. If it's individual models, a fighter may be called upon to make a break test to see if their nerve holds. Break test works exactly the same way as leadership. Roll 2d6, compare the result to the fighter's leadership. If the result is higher, the test is found and his nerve's broken. They run to cover as described below. If the result is equal to or lower than the characteristic, it's passed and they keep, they keep their nerve. In this case, there is no further effect and the fighter continues as normal. So, when to test. If a fighter goes down or is out of action, each friendly fighter within two inches must take an immediate break test. Uh, interesting. And you just have to run to cover. Combat with broken fighters. Breaking from hand to hand combat. Recovering your nerve. Take a leadership test. Yep. Yeah. The bottle test. A kill team that sustains heavy casualties risks losing its bottle. The bottle test is a special role that players must take at the start of their turn. If a quarter or 25% of their kill team is down or out of action, rounding up, for example, the kill team, 10 fighters a test is required if three or more fighters are down or out of action. Okay, and in the better part of Valor, the player may voluntarily fail a bottle test if they wish to do so. <laughs> cool, advanced rules. Falling, that's like if you fall off the top levels and so on. Jumping down. Falling onto another fighter. Ha! Jumping across. Wow. Very, very flexible. So you can really say, right, move this guy here, I'm going to run to there, I'm going to jump over this, now I'm going to do that. And it's all, uh, even the movement that's there, it's interesting features to it. Uh, stray shots. Stray shots, would you believe it? Scout A shoots at the orc, but rolls a one in his to hit roll, as scout B is within half an inch of the line of fire, there is a chance he will be hit by the stray shot. So friendly fire, even possible in this system. Uh, exploding weapons, and then attacking terrain features as well. There's some different uh, attributes here, fear, terror, hatred, frenzy. Then you've got the armory, types of weapons, Special weapons, heavy weapons, grenades, basic weapons, hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons and pistols. This is all of your uh, abilities here. Look at this one, chain sword. Close, close combat weapon, strength 4, damage 1. Save modifier, minus 2. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good in this game. Uh, laser gun. Strength for damage. A fair bit of information on that. And then we've got big chopper. Buzz Chopper, Chain Sword, Chopper, Combat Blade, Cutlass, Dock's Tools, Grabber Stick. This is all focused for Orcs, Guard, and uh, Blood Angels, or Marines. Grot Prod, Kill Sword, Knife, Lightning Claw, Power Fist, Power Axe, Power Claw, it's all of the Thunder Hammer. I've done. So they've done it in uh, alphabetical order here. Shank, <laughs> just the same rules for Knife, Servo Arm, Squeak. Hide whip uh, there as well. Power sword, power maul, dirty syringe, pistols here, all of the usuals, crop blaster, custom mega slugger, plasma pistol slugger. Then uh, basic weapons here, uh, bolt gun, combi weapons, les gun, shooter, shotgun, sniper rifle. It's all listed, special weapons, like melter guns, plasmas, plasma guns, heavy flamers. Heavy weapons, missile launcher, um, heavy bolter, snares gun, grenades, armor. So you've got carapace, heavy armor, which is carapace, flak armor, power armor, scout armor, terminator, squeak, hired armor. Look at this ammunition and gun sights, a git finder, hellfire bolts, hotshot laser power pack, red dot laser sight. Wow. Toxic round, telescopic sight, nice. Specialized equipment, this is really fun here. It'd be great fun putting together your own kill team and you can really do some nice like conversion work on the miniatures. You know, it's a small uh, squad that you could do, really customize them. And by all means, you can then incorporate them 
into your regular 40k army. No problem at all with collecting guards. You could pick out the models and turn them into a kill team. Um, so a brute shield, camo gear, clip harness. Interesting. Photo visor. Uh, slab shield, weapon reload, storm shield. So photo visor, a uh, stationary fighter equipped with a photo visor reduces the penalty when shooting a model in cover by one. So partial cover is ignored. Cover counts as minus one to hit rather than minus two. Cool. A clip harness. Um, the, end, the end of a safety line must be fastened to... Uh, if a model with a fastened safety line becomes pinned or goes down within an inch of an edge, then it does not have to test to fall. The fastened harness prevents the wearer from falling, just as if they pass initiative test. So, rules as well. Cool. So that's the rules then, that's 70 pages into the book, so it's, it's in depth enough, that's for sure. Maybe this publication or, or the, the production of the box that came with it, and you've got the scouts and the orcs with it, maybe the Games Workshop were testing the waters to see how, if there was that demand still out there for Necromander style games. Um, creating a t kill team here, uh, so you have a team leader, troopers, specialists and then new recruits as well. Choosing the kill team, you have, must have a minimum of three fighters. There's a maximum number as well. You have elite and then the uh, different types of fighters as well. Okay. So this is your recruitment cost. For example, a novitiate scout will cost 75 points. It's interesting, a scout gun is 110 points. So completely different point system. Because uh, that's just for one model, so that's a completely different uh, point system to uh, regular 40k. So this isn't just a game of 40k and then a, a pointless book, this is a completely uh, overhauled rules system here. Just taking bits from all over the place. Astrum and the Tyrant kill teams. Orc kill teams, and that's it, that really is focusing on those three factions just there. That's giving you an idea of what the game will look like. Yeah, and then they're promoting uh, this um, Admec terrain, which is perfect for it, especially for walkways and so on. So you can do this sort of multiple level. I have these sets here, I've reviewed them on the channel already. Um, so I really look forward to painting them up because I've got Skitari and I uh, want to create sort of a Skitari base slash homeworld type set of terrains sort of a Martian landscape with this kind of setup on it. Yeah, so there's this. Scouts there for the Blood Ravens look very nice. Uh, Dark Angels ones just here. Specialist characters that you can pick out for your army. The Death Watch kill teams would obviously suit this game very, very well indeed. Uh, then uh, onto Orcs here as well. Just got one of those actually. Uh, the Orc Pain Boy. Uh, the Flash Kits, beautiful miniatures that they are. Really, really nice. Very good, and all your different guardsmen here as well. Uh, Militar and Tempestas, they would look really good uh, in this kind of game also. No, they, would, they would look really cool. You could even just buy a box of them and just have that as a kill team. Uh, Alright, so you've got missions then. Kill Team Fight, Scavengers, Hit and Run, The Raid, giving you terrain uh, suggestions here as well. Ambush, Rescue, Shadow War campaigns, right, so that's part of the Shadow War uh, here, so you've got Hunt in the Promethean Sprawl. Here, oh no, it's not a mission, it's a... Uh, okay, once you've chosen a mission to mustard your kill team, both players roll on a table below which will decide the subplots of the mission you're about to play. There, before any terrain or fighters are set up, each player rolls 2d6 and looks at the result on the subplots table. Both results are apply, apply to the mission you're about to fight. Okay, so that tweaks the game around that way. That's your missions there, 1 to 6 to war. I like campaigns. So now you've got your campaign rules. Rewards of battle, cool. Uh, serious injuries, there you look, casualties go, see how they recover. Uh, advance, skills. Look at that. Oh, well, there's all your space range chapters. Combat skills, frosty skills, gorilla skills, agility skills, muscle skills, shooting skills, stealth skills. You couldn't just pick this book up and play a game, you'd have to <laughs> it's a 
fair bit to look into to get it right. Special operatives, space range special operatives here. Pocket freeze veterans, terminators, death watch, veteran. For orcs, it's pain boys, mechs, Rumpfords, and Gretchen. And the flesh skip. Astronaut Tyrum, Tech Priest Engines here, Officio Perfectus, Commissar, Ogrim, Tempestus Science, Shadow Wars, Sisters of Battle here, Weapons and Equipment, Cow Space Marine, ah oh, right, so they haven't neglected the other factions, it's all in here, all their weapons are covered, Dark Elder Witch Cult uh, here as well, with all of their special weapons, Special characters or uh, models, Craft World Eldar. Right, so this is so it's all contained in here. Well, I was wondering if there's going to be add-on books and so on, but they've, they've, it's all in this book. Uh, Gene Silver Colts. They would be brilliant for playing in that type of game. Uh, weapons and equipment covered for them. Uh, Grey Knights here as well uh, for them, and then Harlequins as well. They'd be fascinating to play in that. Uh, terrain set up as well. Some factions would do better. Well, they'd all look pretty good. They all do quite well, I'd imagine. I mean, fun. It would be fun to use any of the factions, I think. I mean, like, even the tower, you could put a specialist tower, like, team together for that as well. Inquisition, again, perfect for that type of uh, game. Weapons and equipment for them, special operatives. Necrons as well, they would, you'd expect them to find them in some of the cities. Uh, weapons for them as well. Just there, Skitari Ranger kill teams as well. Tau Pathfinder kill teams, weapons and equipment, and operatives. Uh, Tyranny Warrior kill teams, just there, and a miniature showcase. Just there. I've always got a lot of showcase, but it's not, it's all rules. Jammed pack full of rules here. Because obviously they've had to re sort of redo them all um, to match in with the special rules, particularly for. This game, Genius to the Cult models, look fantastic uh, for this kind of uh, game. They really do look good for fighting in the city. Skitari would look good as well. They would suit a lot of the factions very well. Here's your reference charts at the back. Just there, summary of the weapons as well. And then here is your roster. So you could photocopy that. They've probably given you permission. Yep, permission granted a photocopy. Photocopy that and write out your army list. Just that. So it is a big book. Uh, it's 200 pages exactly. That is a big publication. So there it is. That's the review. That's what you can expect to find inside. I've got my gamefigures.com as I've said, so you can check them out. So if you know what's going to happen with this in regards to Necromander, whether Necromander is going to entirely replace this, uh, or it's in addition to it, whether this is standalone or not. Uh, then by all means leave that in the comments and feedback. If you've played some games of this already, uh, it's obviously a lot more in depth than regular 40k. Leave your uh, impressions of it there in the comments section as well. But there it is, that's the review for Shadow War Armageddon, uh, the publication and rules here. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.